Well, hello everyone, and welcome to AC's 8-Bit Zone. In today's midweek coffee break, we're going to compare two Arduino microcontrollers, and we're going to look at how we can use them to test IC chips. One of the chips I want to test first is the Commodore 64 PLA chip. And we're also on our way to 100 subscribers, so if you haven't already, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button, click on the bell, and you'll get an update when the next video comes out, which will be in just a few days. So without further ado, let's open some packages and get started looking into this IC chip tester. Let me first explain what I'm trying to build before we open the packages. If we go back to a previous episode, and I'll link that up above, we were talking about the Commodore 64 PLA chip, the programmable logic array. We talked about the 16 inputs on the left and the eight outputs on the right. What I'd like to do is build a diagnostic testing board so that I have a socket on a board, I can remove a PLA from a Commodore, plug it into my test board, run a quick program using a microcontroller, and fully test the PLA chip in just a matter of seconds, and get a thumbs up or a thumbs down on whether it's a good chip. And if it's not a good chip, maybe even display some diagnostic information about what, exactly what failed. So in order to do this, a couple of microcontrollers here. This is a AT Mega 2560. It has a 16 megahertz oscillator, 256K of flash, 16K of RAM, and 70 or 80 digital IOs or programmable IOs. This much smaller little guy here is the AT Mega 328P. Uh, much less expensive, obviously. And this is the, the Nano board. The Arduino Nano has 32K of flash and 2K of RAM. Okay, we have our microcontroller and a socket and we would connect 16 digital IOs to the inputs of the PLA and would bring back eight outputs from the PLA to other digital inputs. And I'll write some code that will exercise the interesting combinations of inputs and check for the expected outputs. And then print F some information about what passed and what failed. All of this works in, in five volt domain, so there are no IO voltage level incompatibilities, everything just naturally would work. This larger microcontroller board has its own power supply, so we could just use this nine volt power supply. And we have everything we need here, and we could plug in the PLA and run the test. Now, to the parts that we're gonna to open today. So suppose we don't wanna use the large board, or we don't have the large board, or it's too much expense, or whatever. Let's say we want to use a Nano or other microcontroller. The Nano also runs with five volt VCC but the, the solution I'm going to talk about now doesn't require that. We could actually use anything from 1.8 volts up to five volts. The first two components are going to be a 74 LVC 8T595 and a 74 LVC165. The 595 is a serial to parallel converter and the 165 is the inverse of that it's a parallel to serial converter inside the 595 just picture 
eight flip flops. So there's a digital in, there's a shift clock, store clock. So these three lines would come right out of digital I.O. On the, from the Arduino. On every rising edge of shift clock, one bit of digital in will be shifted in to the first register and all eight registers shift right. In fact, we can go ahead and place two of these components in series and we'll have a total of 16 registers. So on a store clock, there is a simultaneous load of all eight flip-flops into a set of eight output flip-flops. And finally, one of the really nice features of the 595 is this output stage. The output buffers can operate from a different VCC than the digital. So if you had a 3.3 volt microcontroller or lower, that would be no problem. Whatever that microcontroller is, the VCC of the digital portion, uh, I think it can go as low as uh, one volt, uh, and you can still have an output stage at another VCC, and we would make that five volts to interface with the PLA. So another eight here, just like the first eight. So this is just a long shift register. It's 16 bits wide. So we would shift 16 bits of digital input into that register. One strobe of the storage clock parallel loads all 16 bits into the output stage and simultaneously we would get 16 digital IOs to drive the PLA inputs. So with the PLA here, we would then bring his outputs over to the 165. So eight outputs of the PLA coming in to the 165. Again, there are eight flip-flops. And there is a load signal from the Arduino that simultaneously latches all eight inputs into the flip-flops. And again, there is a shift clock, and it can even be the same shift clock as the 595s, or it can be a different one if, if you wanted independent control. And a digital out. So this shift clock clocks all eight all eight flip-flops. There is a digital in for cascading. So again, you could have 16 of these if you just if you just connected a second chip. And uh, the, the last chip in this chain will have a D out that goes back to the Arduino. So at the Arduino, we have at most six signals, five, five or six signals for its programmable discrete I.O. Oh, and for power, there are various little modules such as this one. I have a couple of power supplies similar to this lying around. So this one is a, a very common 5 volt and 3, 3 volt solution. I think it's using a couple of linear regulators. So this power supply or a similar one would power everything here from the Arduino to the digital converters and the PLA chip.
Let's open some packages now. Okay, so this week we have lots of little packages to open, and this is all on the theme that we just discussed. I think all of these are related to the project, which is going to be an IC tester. Okay, okay. So this is a set of adapter boards that go from SSOP 24 pin parts to DIP 24. And a set of SSOP to 20 pin DIP. These will be really handy to convert some of the surface mount components to DIP so we can breadboard a little bit more easily with them. Next, okay, these next two packages are very similar. So it is just dozens and dozens of pin headers. Next up. Okay, multicolored solid core 22 gauge wire. We have, what is that, violet, black, red, yellow, oh, brown, and green or gray? Oh, I don't know, let's just open this up and see exactly. Oh, okay, so it comes with a few little pieces of shrink tubing, some zip ties in different colors. I've never had multicolored zip ties before. Okay, there's the wire. Okay, so we have blue, black, red, yellow, green, and white. And some sort of a little tool in there. What is that? It's like a little wire stripper tool. Okay. Yeah, but that'll be helpful for, uh, for the breadboarding, either for pushing into the the breadboard type or for making soldered connections on the back side of the, the through hole proto board. And one other item in that package before we move on to the big package. Okay, power supplies. Two pieces of of uh, something like, I think it's 9 to 15 volt DC power supply to 5 volts and 3.3 volts. Right. So uh, we'll take this over to the bench and get a closer look at it. And finally for the big package, this one is from Mauser. And this one is going to contain all of the little components that we talked about in the opening of this video. Abricon 1.8432 megahertz oscillators. Oh, that's for a future project. And then there's a uh, ethernet jack and 74 HCS74 flip-flop. I believe this is one of the flip-flops with Schmidt trigger inputs also part of that upcoming project, and a 10 megahertz oscillator. Let's just take a quick look through the baggies. Okay, four pieces of the 165 shift register, four pieces of the 595 shift register, and we have the 1.8432 oscillator, the 10 megahertz, the HCS74 flip-flop, and two pieces of the Max 5 CPLD. This one is the it's the 5M160 size of CPLD. It has 160 macro cells of logic in it. 
Here are the power supply modules. Yeah. Okay, so DC barrel jack input and it said somewhere 12 volts. So 12 volt power supply and there are a couple of LDOs on here, the AMS 1117s, and we have three pins worth of five volts out, three pins of 3.3 volts out, and then this is the DC 12 volts pass through, and then the whole bottom row is nine pins worth of ground. So that should be a very useful module. Then we have the, uh, the wiring package. We could even try out this little wire stripper that came with the kit. Just put it in the V there and uh, pull it off. Yeah and the adapter boards to adapt from thin SOP or SOP to dip. Oh yeah, so on the on one side there's SOP and then on the other side it's SSOP or thin smaller form factor package and same with the 24 pin it's SSOP on one side and SOP on the other so uh, a couple of pieces that we'll use right away for this up-and-coming project the shift registers and then some pieces for a future project toward the end of September or uh, in October sometime all right, we opened up some cool components and we have some ideas for an upcoming project that will help test ICs and specifically the PLA chip. And uh, if you haven't already, definitely hit that subscribe button. This is a new channel and it's gonna help me immensely if I can get some more subscribers. So until next time, see you then.